think our initial thoughts were we didn't obviously we were aware of what was happening in other countries and the pressures on there and it was just not knowing how it was going to affect us over here and one of our big things was about obviously there's such a pressure for beds but knowing how unwell people become on ICU just knowing how much therapy they need as well to help them get out of hospital it's just one thing about having oxygen and a ventilator or or even just on the wards there's so much pressures on therapists behind the scenes to actually help rehabilitate and discharge patients and we had little to no idea yeah. about how it was going to affect patients physically so mm. we were getting little bits of information about how it affects them medically but obviously on ICU they have such long stays and we had no idea about what we were going to face also we knew we were going to have to be really flexible with how we approach what we were going to see at that time I mean personally for me it only dawned on me that it was going to be how bad it was going to get when I remember stepping onto HDU, which is normally our level two patients, and then suddenly it was full of ventilated mm. patients. And then every time we sort of went into the next and then they area, created a new, a new ICU on another medical ward. Um, and it was kind of those sort of times, which when I think back, really stick out in my head. I can still remember walking into HDU and being, although we knew it was coming, still being quite shocked. Um, and I think as as we you know, as patients, we were watching the patients and observing them, we were seeing that they were on ventilators for longer and longer, and then we were not, we were recognising that these patients were also younger, and we were finding bits out about them, so they were marathon runners, or rugby players, or working full-time as teachers, and yeah. suddenly you're thinking, how are we going to get these patients back to doing what they were doing Meaningful before? Meaningful lives again. Um, so we were looking after their chests, helping the nursing mm. staff, but also acutely aware that we needed to do something to help these patients and the sooner you get rehab in, we know that, we know the sooner that you get patients rehab, the, the better they're And I think us, our role be. therapists, not just in ICU, but across the hospital, that we can often spend a lot of time with patients, like sitting with them, talking to them, which doctors and nurses don't always have, have that, that time available. And then to have visitors not be allowed in, which was so hard for the patients that actually we were taking on a huge role with just comforting mm -hmm. patients and trying to facilitate them being able to talk to families. And, um, certainly on ICU, like there was the family liaison service set up so families could write messages in and then they would pass them through to us. And so we're having to read out these like heartfelt messages to patients. and. It was yeah. really difficult to read these out to the patients. So like, you don't know them, but suddenly you feel like you've been dragged into their whole whole life, life and you yeah. suddenly find out so much about them. I think I, that certainly yeah. for me was, I was on, I think, quite a lot of autopilot. Mm. You'd go up, you'd be like, I need to do this, I need to do this. Yeah. And then suddenly you'd be reading a message out to a patient from their brother. Yeah. And then suddenly you'd be thinking, this could be my brother. Yeah. And then you'd look around and you'd be like, that could be my mum and dad. And you mm. suddenly had, you had like husbands and wives on ICU and you were thinking of their poor children that yeah, were sat at home mm. and I think it was that humanising aspect and the fact that the stories that you were hearing on the news every day were happening all around you. Mm. It was kind of surreal uh, you know, and really, it was really difficult yeah. when you look back to it. I think I've blocked a lot of it yeah. out. <laughs> um, so um, on ICU we quadrupled our capacity from four full-time physios to 16 full-time physios working 12 hours a day, seven days a week. And most of that was to support sort of nursing staff to help with proning. We were sort of helping with washes. We were sort of taking the, the less clinical bits of the nurses that we could do just to help support them as well as chest clearance and our rehab um, that we would have normally done. And then again on the wards, it was just Again, just going above and beyond what we would normally do, just knowing that actually the nurses are run off their feet, they've got sickness as well, um, that, you know what, let's help patients more with toileting, washing, changing bed sheets, just doing any jobs you could do that you wouldn't normally do so that you could focus on your normal jobs in hand. Um, patient, the patients with COVID obviously presented, they were quite a lot younger than our normal ICU co cohort. Um, however, a lot of them were significantly weaker in the amount of patients that we had. So lots of them couldn't move their arms or their legs, didn't have any sitting balance. So we, you know, rehab was so important. We'd see them even up on ICU with our increased staffing. We'd see them twice a day if we were able to. 
and then when they stepped down onto the wards, the ward staff, I mean, the rehab, I think, was absolutely, I mean, the light that COVID shone on the need for rehab and the way that we stepped up to rehabilitate, rehabilitate these patients, I think is absolutely amazing. Um, I think, in fact, I know that these patients would be in a worse place if we hadn't been there seeing them twice a day. And I don't know how we really managed that, no. but we, we did with the increased staffing. We did manage to see a lot of them twice a day, and that was reflected on the wards as well. Obviously, we had so much help from other services like the community teams redeployed staff, and we had ex staff come back to work with us. And without them, we wouldn't have been able to, to do the service that we, we provided. In some ways, I think some, the patients got more, more therapy yeah. during COVID than they did than they do now which is so strange to think that that would be a result of redeployment and, and, and staff efforts but um, I think that's definitely a fact and I think it showed actually in our outcomes and I think it was so important because these some of these patients were so young and and you know the thought of you know as a team you know ICU nurses and doctors they save their lives but we also need to get them we need to give them their lives back and it's no good leaving someone not being able to do what they were doing and I think we did that yeah really proud it was a massive team effort um, and I have the privilege of I review patients at three months once they come once they've left ICU they come back to the um, ICU follow-up clinic and to see a patient that couldn't move in ICU mm. walk through the door with a smile on their face is yeah the feedback we've received from those patients, patients is just is it's so makes great. you emotional. Yeah, it does. <laughs> you think, oh. We're normally quite hard, hard us lot, and then suddenly we've, we've got all these patients saying thank you and just yeah. seeing them back living their lives again. Obviously, some of them still have still some battles, on, ongoing yeah. problems, but otherwise, like considering what state they could have been in and what state they were in, sometimes yeah. you know, not being able to move at all mm. to just yeah. was a was a well, it was a good part of the yeah. um, experience. If they could be a good part. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, my, I mean, we obviously work close with the ICU nurses. I guess my yeah. admiration for what the ICU nurses went through yeah. and seeing them, you know. So much pressure was put so on So much pressure the was ICU on them. And, you team, so. and they were just phenomenal. Like, I yeah. don't know how they did it, um, really. And, and our ward, and our, and our therapy staff, like the, re, the rehab that I think we kind of often goes under the radar rehab and the importance of it, but I think despite that everyone still stepped There's up. There's one thing getting them yeah. well enough to leave hospital is another thing getting them physically fit to leave hospital to get back to a life. A, yeah. a life again a quality of life and that's what we work towards across OT, physio, speech and language and the dietitians. it's just so that they can not just get out of hospital but carry on living a life to some extent. Yeah. Unbelievable. Draining. Phenomenal.